Good evening. Call the meeting to order. The Rutherford County Citizens Stormwater Advisory Committee. Call the roll, please. Yes. Make sure you're using your mics. Sorry, guys, hit the buttons. Am I using my mic? Is it right here? Yes, yours yeah. is on. You're okay, good. I'm you're on. Good. Okay. Here. Do have a quorum. Have the minutes, please, of May 21st, 2024. I think those are in your packet. They're in our packet. Yeah, I think those are in your packet. I did not bring those for the big screen. Okay. Oh, they're not. Sorry. I have a motion. Has, has everybody read these? Oh. I have not. Anybody read them? I can pull them up from the website. Let's see. Yes, ma'am. Um, this one? Oh, this one. So can all of you see that on your screen? Let's look over the minutes. Let me, here, let me, can I, can I get rid of that? Oh, no, let's make them bigger. I'll try to make it a little bit bigger so y'all can see it. Is that, okay. is that better? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'll scroll through. Um, all right, this is when we met in May. Um, we called it to order. Um, we approved the minutes from last time. We talked about some bylaws. Um, we opened the floor for public comment. We had none. Um, we discussed the new stormwater ordinance and um, we kind of went through that pretty in depth. Everybody probably remembers that. We talked about like the buffer zones, design standards, um, what those were gonna be for the streams and any changes. Mark suggested a few changes to the items. Um, we did make those changes to the ordinance. Um, we had some more discussions about um, the SEMs and the water quality treatment charts and what we were gonna be, what were gonna be allowed in floodplains and we made those changes and that was uh, moved and seconded by Mark and then seconded by Jennifer. We discussed the, um, the effective date of the policy as that we were supposed to have our um, program in compliance by September 1. We decided to make our ordinance uh, align with that, so we chose to put the effective date of September 1. And Ms. Diane uh, moved, and that was seconded by Mark Lee, and that was approved. Um, we had no other comments and then we adjourned the meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? I make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? I second a motion. Okay, the motion's been seconded. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion carries. So we will open up the or for public comment? No Has one anyone signed up. Nobody signed up. Close public comments uh, portion of the meeting. 
Now we're going to have election of officers. Sure thing. Um, I would like to open the floor for nominations. Okay, so we have to, each year we um, elect the chair and the vice chair each year. Um, I try to kind of go over what we're doing each time because we, we have a hard time remembering from year to year. Um, so I will open the floor for nominations for the chair. Uh, Delia Goodman has been our chair for quite a while. Um, so I'm gonna open that up. I couldn't find the button on this. Uh, Ms. Dale, will you accept if nominated? Out of you to ask, Marvin, yes. I nominate Ms. Goodman for chair again. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Um, all in favor? We can do it aye with, with a vote of aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Ms. Delia, you will continue to be our chair. Um, now I'd like to open the floor for a motion for our vice chair. Marvin has been our vice chair for two years. Oh, he, he pointed two, so I'm going to go two years. Um, are there any nominations for a vice chair? I make a motion that Mr. Marvin, if he would accept to be vice chair again, you accept Marvin? Okay, he said yes. <laughs> you did have to run one meeting. <laughs> I will second that motion. Okay, that's seconded by Josh Upham. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Marvin, you'll be our vice chair. Thank you guys for serving. Now we're going to open the floor for public hearing for MS4 annual report. No. Not somebody. No here, no one here to speak. Close the floor. Public hearing is now closed. Awesome. Meyer, would you please update us on the stormwater activities? Sure thing. Um, usually this time I kind of go over a little bit of what, what we've accomplished this year, where we're at, and what we will be submitting to TDEC. Um, last year I told you guys they changed everything and put us in an online format, which um, uh, made things a little more difficult and a little less user-friendly to read. So as you guys look at these, they look a little... Um, I don't, I don't want to say funky, but it does look a little funky and it looks hard to read and it doesn't seem like a report, but this is the only preview printout that I can get out of the TDEC online portal reform system. So this is what we get. Anyway, so we've um, done quite a few activities this year. I'll uh, kind of just go on down to our, we do a lot of education and outreach, as you guys know. We do a lot of public participation as part of that outreach. We try to um, hit, a, hit a lot of our metrics all in, all in a lot of, we get, like to get a big bang for our buck. So we do a lot of big events throughout the year. Um, so we do anything from, oh, let me get that. we do anything from uh, education sent out to uh, say detention pond owners, to property management companies. Um, each year we do Earth Day on the Square. If you guys haven't come out for that, I'd recommend it. It's a fun time for the family and everyone. Uh, we do partner with the city of Murfreesboro for tree day every year and uh, we mail letters out to homeowners who are on certain pieces of a stream and we try to get those people out and we, we bought trees and we give them trees and hope that they plant them in the riparian areas and so we target those stream buffers trying to get keep our stream buffers healthy um, and we usually have a pretty pretty good turnout for that um, we also do an urban runoff that's in Nashville every year. Um, Jonathan went up and represented me this year in that. And he had a good time. Um, it had like 346 people runners, I believe. Was that runners? Total runners. So there's a lot more people than that that attend the event. There's oodles of people who come from 
um, to talk. They have it's like a water quality festival, so there's booths, um, anything from used oil to engineering firms to water quality MS boards from Nashville, Gallatin, all over the place. Um, and they run their 5K and have a good time. And anyway, if you're in for running, come out and fun. This is a really fun event. Um, we do Waterfest. Actually, Friday this week is going to be Waterfest. And I'm really sad because I think it's potentially going to get rained out due to the tropical storm coming in. Um, we've never been rained out before. So I'm very sad, but this is our big, big event. We usually have about 1,200 teachers that, and kids that come out. Um, this year was going to be our first year to do it without Miss Bonnie. As y'all know, she retired in July, wait, June, end of June. Miss Bonnie Irvin, our stormwater coordinator, I mean, our stormwater education is she? Education. coordinator. She's our education coordinator because um, she did, we have a partnership with Smyrna Laverne and City of Murfreesboro. And we pull money together and we pay a position and this person works with schools and works with kids and works with people throughout Rutherford County, all over the county, not just the city, not just Laverne, not just Smyrna. Um, so Miss Bonnie retired and we got a new lady. Her name is Miss Heather Bennett and she's amazing. Um, so she has just taken off running with all of our activities and everything we've been doing. And so we're, this year we had scaled it down to about five or 600 kids instead of 1,200 to hopefully ease her into it. And we have everything ready to go, but apparently with a tropical storm coming. So we'll just keep, so the keep water, on. The water fest is gonna get rained out. I'm afraid so. The water fest is gonna get rained out. We, how many booths were we supposed to have? 40 something? 39. 39 booths. So that's how many people that Jonathan's been working hard to coordinate to come in from all over the place. I mean, people from like the core to TDEC, yes. local consulting firms, I mean, you name it, Smyrna, SOAC, everybody was coming. Um, Murfreesboro, they've got tons of representatives. Uh, Parks and Rec is our big partner in this project, so they help us through Parks and Rec. They provide a ton of the stuff. It's a big event, so we're kind of sad. But anyways, I'll just dry my tears and move on. <laughs> so then we always did like June in the Creek. That's fun. They, um, Miss Heather and Miss Bonnie did these together this year because we had about enough money for about a 10 week crossover. So I got to cross train Heather with Bonnie and then Jonathan came on in January. So he actually got to help cross train with all of that. So Jonathan, Bonnie and Miss Heather all, Miss Bonnie was training all of them and they were learning a lot of these educational things so that her institutional knowledge would move on through our new people. So that's pretty amazing. Um, and that's just where they go out and do in the creek. They uh, have little test tubes and they, they have little, um, yeah, I meant to close that door. And then they have little skimmers and they can, you know, pull the, bugs out or they can pull the fish out so it's a really fun time for kids um, we also go to the farmers market and we just have a booth there and talk to people about water quality um, miss heather and miss bonnie are both go to the classroom so we have a big project wet piece of our puzzle is a big piece that we do and they go out and um, basically do project wet education and activity with the kids we, we have lots of stuff on our website we're going to get we're gonna to try to get a little more active with our social media. I say that every year and then I fail miserably, but one of these years I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get it. <laughs> I was gonna ask you, how do you oh. publicize all this? Um, social media? We, we do, but we have a huge network that we all work with. Um, is that a good way to describe it? Yeah. yeah, we have a huge just group of people that we already know that we've been working with for years. Um, and, it, and if it's an activity like June in the Creek, that's actually advertised through uh, Smyrna Outdoor Adventure Center, SOAC, that's their acronym, SOAC. Um, they advertise it, so it kind of depends. Usually our partners are really good to advertise for us, so, um, or, or we'll put it on our website. But most of the, it is like, targeted like Earth Day that's that's done by Middle Tennessee Electric so they do a huge huge outreach so we don't really have a lot of issues with that to be honest with you we have other people that help us I depend on great partnerships so there's no way we could do it by ourselves. Um, so we've also you know we do a lot of pre-construction meetings and at all those meetings we talk to the engineers and the developers about 
water quality and our requirements and, and how to keep our stream buffers, keep our streams healthy. So we just do all kinds of stuff to try to get that education out to people. We're required to do it, but we, you know, we also try to do a good job of it. Um, I speak at the Planning Commission sometimes. We had to come through and do our ordinances, so I spoke at um, the Planning and Public Works Committee about our program, about post-construction, and what we require for that. Just different things throughout the year to try to let people know what we're doing. Um, so all of our information is open to the public, so you can go on our stormwater website. I kind of showed that a few minutes ago, but I can show, show that really quick. Um, our program, everything we do has to be publicized, and then anything that's coming through, even through Planning Commission, it's all synced up, so you can go to Stormwater, you can see kind of what all we do. Um, the right nav kind of has like our regulations, our BMPs, our, pl our management plan. Um, that's kind of got all of our stuff that we're required to do, how we do it, um, anything about enforcement, illicit discharges, um, our monitoring programs, pretty much everything we do, um, TDEC says we have to make it public. You know, it has to be out there for the public to see and know what we're doing. Um, I have links on our website that links back to the Planning Commission website. So, you know, if somebody wanted to go to the Planning Commission and see what new projects are coming through for us to approve, those are on there. Um, our permanent requirements, our, our uh, buffer requirements, all, everything we have is, is out there. So you can see the, our six minimum measures, it's all out there. If anybody wants to see like our annual reports from the years, it's out there. Everything we do is pretty much on our website. Um, and if you find something that's not, just reach out to me or Jonathan and, and we'll get it on there. Um, how to apply for land disturbance. Every, everything we do is going to be on, on this website and our fees and how to apply for different things. Um, so let me zip back over to our report. Could I ask a question? Sure, absolutely. So how would the general public get to this location? What would they, what would be their first step of, of finding this uh, well, site? When I do it, I just type in Rutherford County Stormwater and it pops up, Rutherford County Stormwater. And that's the first thing that comes to the top of the page. And then here is our whole website with all of our information. And so, and then the right nav is how, like a lot of times it used to be a left nav. Well, they've changed our, we got a new website. So everything now went to a right nav. So you can, or your subcategories all come under on the right instead of like on the left, like you guys probably used to be able, used to seeing on our county website, it all changed. <laughs> so do you have any other questions for the general public or things that they can look for and do? There's, lot, there's lots of information out there, so let's see. Um, so that was part of the, two years ago we got a new permit, that was part of the permit, was that everything we had to have was out there for the public. So there's a lot of stuff on our website, just like while I go, we're looking for the minutes, they're already out there. Everything we get, everything we do, we post it. Um, the new ordinance is out there, everything. So um, we didn't really get any comments from the public this year on the construction projects about stormwater. We do get comments as we go through our normal review process, but we didn't get any from the public. So we make lots of comments through the revision process for anything that comes through our department, but I didn't really get anything from the public on any specific construction projects this year. Um, but on average, let's see, these are just public participation events, which is basically the same thing as what we already went over. I just have to zip through it. Let's see. All right, so on average, we have about 83 construction sites that we do inspections on, um, but we combine all sections into one, so we may have five or six sections on one site. So we have a lot of inspections that we have to do. Um, we reviewed 212 projects this year. Um, the turnover on that is extremely fast. And what does that mean? Turnover. So when they submit to planning commission, typically I have about a week and a half, maybe two weeks to review 
And if we get 15 submittals, I have a week and a half or two weeks to review 15 to however many items we get. We may get five, we may get 15, we may get 35. So it just depends on what gets submitted. Um, and then that goes back out, comments go back out to the engineers and then they resubmit and then I have about five days to look at it the second time around and then it goes back out and then it comes back in and I have about a day to get it ready for planning commission. So it's, it's extremely fast on getting the reviews done. Um, and then we have priority sites. So our, you know, John, our inspector, he, um, he goes out and does our inspections. Jonathan has been helping me so much get our program where it was supposed to be because we had two years to get our program up to meet the new permit that he hasn't started doing any kind of inspection work yet. Um, it's, there's not a lot of time left at the end of the day to do it. He has been surprised at the workload. Um, he knew it was fast and furious, but he just didn't know how fast and furious it was going to be. Um, so that just kind of talks about our uh, projects. We did, we approved 24 um, sites. That means I had 24 as builts came in on construction projects this year that were closed out. Or what? construction projects. So it's anything from a site plan to a subdivision. Um, when they finish out a section, then we make them do an as-built drawing, which is basically they go out, they send their surveyor, they topo, and they shoot the ground and all the elevations on the pipes, the inverts, to make sure that what they built matches what they designed. Did you say as-built? Mm -hmm. As-built, yep. Yeah. So it's a record drawing showing that the contractor built what the designer intending them to build. But in, but you're inspecting as they go along. Correct. Right? Okay. Correct. We inspect it the whole time. We have three right away inspectors. They actually do pipe inspection also. So I have about four inspectors that are always out looking at pipes, roads, stormwater, and all that for the entire county, which is not a lot of people for the volume that we have. Um, so we did about 24, so I, we, we reviewed those in-house at the end and approved and released 24 sites this year, which is a lot. Um, and then that was part of the new permit was that we do these record drawings and we've always done them, so that was an easy piece to meet. <laughs> we just had to start documenting a little bit better. So I was like, yay, we already do this. Um, we only sent out three letters of uh, ponds that had not been maintained very well last summer. Um, so that's pretty good. Review, tell us again, what does SCM? That's, those are our ponds, stormwater control measures. Okay. I was trying to just be like, what's it actually? It's actually really, for the most part, what we're doing right now are, are ponds, detention ponds or retention ponds. Um, so when we find three that are bad, our uh, stormwater, I've talked about our stormwater assistance. Um, Jonathan was one for Four years? Yeah, four years. For four years, and now I've hired him full time. So it's wonderful. We have the best stormwater assistants that come in every summer and work for about ten weeks, eight to ten weeks for me. Um, we hire anywhere from three to four to five. Some summers we've had five. This summer we hired four, and they do all of our inspections as far as ponds. So they'll go out and look at our ponds every summer. They'll go out and look at our um, SWIP inspections, which are our municipal sites. They'll look at our parking lots, which could be anything from a school parking lot and a school pond to a fire department parking lot to what else y'all do? Convenience centers. Convenience centers. We go out and look at all of convenience centers. Um, any, any county facility, for the most part, we'll go out and inspect them and just make sure that we don't see some kind of erosion issues or something happening that we would need to notify those we would then if we found something, we would notify the person in charge of that. So if I find something, I'm not gonna go fix it. I'm gonna e send an email with, with all the information over to say Trey Lee or to somebody else, depending on what we find. So maybe Bishop if it was something at the convenience center. So we send it to the appropriate people so that they know they've got a problem. So they do a whole, whole bunch of inspections. Um, I'm trying to think what else they do. PSA's, so yeah, so we haven't got to that yet, but we'll get to that on the list. Um, so they do all kinds of stuff. So as we go through, I'll say those are what our summer assistants do. That's what they've been doing. Um, they do a lot of work. Um, let's see. So 
Jonathan was great and he updated our inventory tracking. That was something else we had to have done and it's a great big giant spreadsheet with all of our information on it and all of those ponds and a whole lot of information that TDEC wanted about it. So he did an excellent job wrangling all that information. Um, we do it all in, in GIS and then we can export it out and send it to them. So that's a graphic information system. Um, we, we pretty much do all of that for everything we do. I don't, I think I closed my, I think I closed my GIS package. Um, but we do it all in a graphic information system process, which makes it easy for us to um, locate them because it's all locatable with um, northings, eastings, and points on a map. So it makes it easier to figure out what we're doing and where we're at. Let's see, so we did good. We, um, we've got 94, that's how many inspections they did under our municipal facilities. Our assistants did 94 this year. Only reason we didn't do a couple was because we, uh, we didn't know where they were at and we got them done in July instead of June, so we had two that didn't get done. But they did get done this summer. It's just the permit year and our summer year don't quite overlap the same. Um, we don't need, this is really nothing. So this is our enforcement actions we took this year. We had uh, one verbal warning on IDDE. We had six on construction. We had a written notice. We had one in construction and then post-construction we sent the three letters out for the ponds. We issued non-stop work orders. Um, I, I don't do a whole lot of this other stuff. John just goes out and puts stop work orders on people so that we get them to come in and get them in compliance. That seems to be act a, a little bit better for us than I D D E stand for. Um, those are illicit discharges. So we had somebody. I don't remember what this. Do you remember what this year's complaint was? I can't remember what it was. I don't remember. It could be like last year. Somebody called and they're like, "There's, there's like, a, it looks like an oil sheen in a creek." Well, it was actually just the um, breakdown of the natural uh, leaves and bacteria in the water. It wasn't an actual oil sheen. So sometimes people call things just because they don't really know what it is. Um, I don't remember what this year's was, but it wasn't anything that was viable because we, he went out, he investigated, he looked at it, and it wasn't what the people thought it was. So we do get some random calls like that, but it could be that um, somebody has an illegal, like they're dumping something into the water illegally and, and you can see it or something like that. So that people can report that. We have a hotline, you can email us. That's also on my website. So if you see people doing things like that, you can email us or call us and let us know um, that people are dumping bad things in the creek. But we also have to have proof, so that's kind of hard to do, because usually by the time we get there, those people may be gone. But if it's a regular occurring kind of thing, then we can trace it back and we can figure out where it's coming from. Um, so this year we had to have, okay, so we did a little more sampling this year. Last year we submitted all of our sampling that was required as part of our permit, but this year we went out and did a little extra sampling. Do you want to talk about sampling? Yeah. Yeah, so this year we focused more on source tracking from last year's E. coli sampling. Uh, we targeted Stewart's Creek. Uh, we chose three locations. Uh, progressing upstream towards Rocky Fork Creek just to try to get an idea of potentially the source of where this E. coli was coming from. Two of these locations at the convergence of Rocky Fork and Stewart's Creek, put one there downstream near a horse stable and then one further downstream to hopefully see maybe a spike or an increase so that way we can maybe notate, hey, we, we saw that this was coming from agriculture uses. Um, out of those three sites, they were all below the EPA 941 E. coli numbers for a sim single sample maximum, so, and they were all relatively close to each other, all within about 50 coliform forming units of each other. So we weren't really able to trace down a specific area. It was more of a uniform spread over the three samples that we took. So we try to eliminate things, and so if we if we see there's like say there's no farmland there at all, then we know that we might have um, some septic issues. So we try to, it's kind of part of like elimination and figuring out if we can find anything that's going on. Um, they had a lot of e. Coli, e. coli, which is bacteria from feces or fecal matter. Um, 
they'd had a lot of problems out in Eagleville and they actually traced it back to a lot of leaking septic systems and that's when they ended up putting the big step system in for the town of Eagleville. Um, so you can find things like that when you're out looking or they, they can find different things because they go out and they walk the streams. The assistants and Jonathan, I think, went out. Did you go out with them some? Yeah. I yeah. So they go out and they walk several miles of streams each summer as part of the program too. So they do stream walking and they check a lot of things while they're out there. So walking and sampling. And um, they'll take those, pull those, and we take them to a lab up at Tennessee Tech and then they sample them and they give us the results back. That seemed to work out pretty good so far. Um, let's see. So basically the audit now that we submit is like a self audit. So we have to kind of look at our program and say, did we do a good job? Did we not do a good job? <laughs> what kind of job did we do? <laughs> and so um, I think we always do a really good job with education and outreach. We've hired some incredible people to help with that. We have a lot of, a, huge, a very strong program going. Um, we really want to keep it that way. Um, we just keep hiring wonderful people and they keep helping us and growing our program. We keep making more partners and partnerships are phenomenal. So those are going really well. Um, we didn't have, the only thing I haven't really been able to accomplish well is, is the prevention good housekeeping training for employees. We're still working on that. So I'm gonna meet with, we're meeting with HR, I think next week. We just wanted to get through Waterfest. So next week we're gonna meet with them. We're still not doing great in that. So in our, in our self audit, we're telling ourselves we, we aren't doing such a good job of training in-house people. Um, the computer online stuff is, is a struggle because um, you're trying to train field people with computers. So it's, it's a struggle. So we're gonna try to figure out what we can do with that. But as far as we can tell, um, like I said, we missed two parking lots, but we did do them in July. So they, they all got inspected, but we had to say, no, we didn't get it done in the proper time frame for that. Um, but I think overall, uh, we've done a good job. We've done a good job getting our per program in compliance with the 24 months that we were given. Um, we've got our ordinance updated. You guys were a great help in that. These are all just the attachments that we submit with, the, with it. And then I'll, um, we'll, I'll submit all of this stuff. I just have to hit a button and it, and it goes out to TDEC and they'll take a look at it and tell us whether or not we're, 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 we're good or we're not as far as like submitting it. They don't tell you whether or not your program is good until they come in and do an audit. So when will you push the button? Um, probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> I always wait to have the meeting because I like, you know, you guys may have had time to look at this. If you have questions or if you see things that, you know, I need to take a look at before I submit it, I like to wait to get you guys feedback um, on that. So do you have any questions? I know it's all really fast. It's a lot of information. Um, I feel like we do the same information every time. So you guys are fairly familiar with it. But so if it went too fast, I'm sorry, you can ask me anything or ask Jonathan anything. Yeah, I think we're doing, we're doing, we've, I've gotten some help and it's been amazing. Um, they're able to go out and do a lot more detail than I ever was because I did not have time and I admit that I didn't have time. And so it's been great. He's been able to focus. He's been able to focus on all the things I couldn't focus on and then Basically, from when he got here until now, it's been kind of catch up. Well, now that he's caught up, now we can kind of like maybe come up with some more um, goals that we would like to see and, and, and meet. So that's working out really good. And I think we got so much stuff done with the interns. They were, um, they were getting a little antsy and bored by the end. They're like, what else you got? And I was like, you're done? We never finish. <laughs> What else you got for us? What else you got for us? And I was like, ah! So, yeah, yeah, they're awesome. So are we finished with the update on stormwater? Let me see. I have, if it comes at the end, I have one more thing. Um, actually, no, it was to introduce um, Jonathan and tell you guys about Heather. So if I didn't officially introduce him, this is Jonathan Stem. He's our new stormwater coordinator. 
Um, he's handling basically all the stormwater stuff that I used to do. So he's scheduling the pre-cons. He's interacting with the contractors. Um, he's helping with all of all of this annual report, helping collect the information, help get it into the system. Um, so he will probably be running this meeting next year. So that's why he's kind of up here to just kind of see what we do. And um, he took over our pre-construction meetings for me, which is a huge, huge load. And um, it's going really good. Our ordinance. That was just an update. Let you guys know that it got updated. It went through um, all of the committees it was supposed to. I'm trying to think what all it went through. Um, it, it went through all of them. It went through commission and it got passed. So we're in good shape. And let's see. No. Is there any other business to come before the board? Do you have something, Marvin? Oh, he said no. Sorry. Is there a motion? I move to adjourn, Madam Chairman. I'll second that. We are adjourned. Oh, thank you.